Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing yet another Debian based distribution. This distribution based on Debian Stable is called Antix. Antix is a fast, lightweight, and easy to install Linux Live CD distribution based on Debian Stable branch. Uh, let's see, it desktop environments they offer, it looks like we have the option of using Fluxbox, Ice Window Manager, JWM, or XFCE uh, of these four. Uh, desktop slash window managers. I'll probably just install the Fluxbox window manager. I'm pretty comfortable with that one. And it, it's using lightweight de desktops and window managers. Again, it's for minimal, lightweight desktops. Uh, so older hardware. It only requires 256 megs of RAM for the recommended minimum. The installer needs just 2.7 gigs of hard disk space for the install. So that is pretty minimal. From the Antics website, the presently released Antics 17, which I'm going to be reviewing today, was released October 24th of 2017. So, you know, about five, six weeks ago. All right, so I've downloaded the ISO and I'm gonna be installing Antics inside a virtual machine today. I'm gonna to be installing this inside VirtualBox. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot into the live environment. Looks like the live environment's loading up. Yep. And on our desktop here, we have a icon for install. So I'm going to click on that, and it should run through the installer. This tool sets your default Debian repository and then runs the installer. You can choose between stretch, stable, testing for experts, and SID unstable for experts. Oh, well, I wasn't aware of that. I thought it was strictly based on Debian stable. But we do have the option of setting the repos to testing or unstable if we so choose. So that's pretty cool. Now I have a decision to make. Do I go with the stable version, like I assumed it was going to be, or should I roll the dice and go with testing or potentially SID? You know what? I'm going with SID, you know, just because that's the way I roll. All right, click OK. The installer should run now. It's asking me one more time about re repos. I'm going to choose SID again. All right, keyboard. You know what? I've got two different installers going. It looks like I may have clicked on the installer twice. I'm not sure why I've got so many windows popped up. I may have clicked on the installer installer twice though. I'm just going to go with this one right here. Auto install using entire disk. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Okay, to format and use the entire disk slash dev slash sda for antics. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give Annex the uh, entire 15 gig hard drive that I created for this virtual machine. According to the Antix website, it only needs about 2.7 gigs of hard disk space for the install, so very minimal. I will say that I've never installed or uh, run Antix before. It's been around for a long time, I've heard of it. Uh, I've noticed it has been climbing in the DistroWatch page hit rankings here lately. It is ranked number 17, which is interesting, you know, because you don't see that many people running Antics. I mean, you rarely see Antics out in the wild, but apparently it, it's got a pretty strong following right now, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm reviewing it today. We're still waiting for the installer to finish here. Of course, after that, we still have some other stuff. We still have to create user, root password, all that. Okay, installing the bootloader. Install Grub for Antics. Yeah. Okay to install Grub bootloader at SDA. Yeah, that's good wait for it to install grub. Right, our computer name. It is chosen Antics1 and then the computer domain it is chosen example.dom. I'm just gonna leave them as what is chosen by default. Alright, then we have some clock settings. Uh, the time. This is not the correct time here but I'm just gonna leave it for now. Uh, it may correct itself once I choose a proper time zone here. So in this list, I'm going to choose America slash Chicago, because Chicago is in the central time zone. I'm in the central time zone. All right, default user account. I'm going to go with uh, how about Antics for my username. Default password. Let me give it a password. Of course, this is for our normal user, the Antics user. We do need to create an administrator password, a root password, too. 
you will need a root password of course to install or remove software to do any changes to the system all right you also have the option of auto login I don't like ticking that on I would like to be asked for a password for logging into the desktop um, I'm gonna click next and continue all right it looks like we might have finished the install yeah we need to re reboot the system to complete the installation I'll be right back all right and we're waiting for our newly installed antics to load up all right we got to our login manager pretty fast here I need to log in I need to type in our username of course I chose antics as my username all right and we are in antics and I'm not exactly sure what desktop environment we're in here okay guys I restarted the the machine there to uh, get a proper resolution here with the VirtualBox guest editions alright this uh, desktop environment uh, looks like it is the ice window manager uh, let me log out of this particular window manager I don't know much about the ice window manager I may play around in it but let's see what window managers are installed by default when we go back to our login manager here you see F1 to toggle session so if I hit F1 at the login manager you will see uh, I was on ice WM now it says the session is Fluxbox if I hit F1 again we move to space Fluxbox Fluxbox Herbst Luft WM which is a tiling window manager with a funny German sounding name and then back to the rocks dash ice window manager which was what we logged into by default a second ago I am just going to move this over we have JWM as a possibility too to just a standard Fluxbox session because I like Fluxbox I'm familiar with how it functions so let me log back in and this is your standard Fluxbox window manager I will say that that's pretty cool that they have about five or six uh, different minimal window managers to choose from. Some floating window managers, some tiling window managers. I really like that. Uh, and, and window managers that don't require a lot of like dependencies or anything. So it's not really taking up much hard disk space at all to have all of these window managers on your system. So I'm going to go through the Fluxbox me uh, menu here. It's a right click menu similar to Openbox if you've ever used Openbox. Uh, and see what kind of uh, applications are installed uh, according to the uh, right click menu here in Fluxbox we have a terminal Let's see what terminal they're using they're using the LX terminal that's the standard terminal in the LXDE desktop environment so it's a lightweight minimal terminal file manager Let's see what file manager they're using looks like they're using the rocks ROX uh, file manager yeah, rocks filer. Yep. Yeah. So it's a lightweight, minimal file manager. Uh, excuse me, that wasn't actually part of this. That was my actual desktop there, that menu. All right. So web browser. The web browser they're using by default. See if they're using a lightweight, minimal web browser. No, they're actually using Mozilla Firefox. And this actually. Let's see what version of Firefox they're using. So they're on. Uh, 52.4.0 again the uh, the ISO is about five six weeks old especially since I chose Debian SID the unstable branch I could do some updates and there would be quite a few packages that could be updated here text editor they're using genie for a text editor alright under the personal menu here we have personal menu help video that's interesting I don't think I've ever seen a help video uh, in a Linux distribution. I'm actually going to try to play this just to see what it's all about. I, I probably shouldn't play too much of it on a YouTube video. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so I closed out the video pretty quick here because it was a YouTube video uh, describing antics. It was like a YouTube reviewer reviewing antics. So I didn't want to play too much of that. Uh, I don't want my video being taken down. So under applications, we have you know your standard application menu with your standard categories uh, under accessories we have you know our app killer process killer we have our archive manager for zip unzip calcurse which is a note taking out 
app. I actually did a video on CalCurse. You guys should check that out. Cherry Tree. I'm not sure what Cherry Tree is. Um, it's like another text editor, potentially. Let me see. It's a hierarchical note taking app, so it's for note taking. Yeah. All right. Also, under accessories, we have our uh, Clip It, which is a clipboard application. Conky Toggle, which Conky is the system monitor that appears on our desktop. We have a calculator. We have the LeafPad text editor. Midnight Commander, which is another text editor, uh, terminal based text editor. Other desktops, we have some rocks stuff. We have our run command. We have uh, another terminal, the RxVT terminal, very minimal, lightweight terminal. We have Search Monkey. We have Space FM for file search. Under Education, we have LibreOffice Math. Under Games, we have a DOSBox Simulator. We have uh, Jeweled and Mahjong. Under Graphics, we have our Document Viewer, G-Color 2, which I'm assuming is possibly a color picker or a paint program. Uh, we have our Digital Camera Browser, LibreOffice Draw again, Mirage, MT Paint, which is a paint program, Screenshot Utility, Simple Scan for scanning. Under Internet, we have uh, Cine, Claws Mail, which is our email client, Connect Shares, Delo, Disconnect Shares, Droopy, Firefox, ESR, again, as our browser, GFTP for you know file transfer protocol, GNOME PPP, we have our hex chat uh, IRC client, your standard IRC chat client, Links2, which is a another browser. So uh, for being a minimal, lightweight desktop, they actually have quite a number of programs. And so I actually didn't expect them to have this many programs installed, but it's all lightweight, minimal stuff. Uh, we have search bar, transmission, BitTorrent client, we have our network manager, we have the LibreOffice suite, the entire LibreOffice suite, really, uh, well, pretty close to it. We have Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. Under Programming, we have Genie again, and we have Vim installed. Under Sound and Video, we have uh, Awesome Mixer, Asunder CD Ripper, MPV, GUVC View, which is a webcam app. You see my face in this uh, this rectangle here. I'm running GUVC View on my main machine. This is that program running. MPS-YouTube, which is a, a way to search YouTube from the terminal. Really cool terminal-based uh, YouTube app. MPV again. Uh, poor Man's Radio Player, SMTube. Sound card user, speaker test, stream light, stream tuner to WinFM, WinFF, excuse me, and then XMMS, which is a uh, minimal, almost Win amp like uh, audio player. Pretty cool stuff. All right, under Office, well, we've already done system tools. All right, Annex Help, Boot Repair, Broadcom Manager, you know, your s standard system settings. We have some partition stuff, GR Sync for doing backups, Lucky Backup, another backup utility. So they install a few backup programs. The Synaptic Package Manager for package management. For those of you that are familiar with Debian and Debian based distros, uh, Synaptic Package Manager is a really good graphical package manager. If you don't want to use the command line and just do, you know, your standard apt install, apt remove, apt update, apt upgrade. Uh, the Synaptic Package Manager is a very easy, very familiar format for installing, removing software, and updating your system. And that is Antics in a nutshell. Just briefly, I've already showed you the Fluxbox Window Manager, and very briefly, the ICE Window Manager. I'm going to log into the JWM session just to show you how that particular session looks. Oh, and that is a really pretty cool window manager. Again we have a right click menu very similar to OpenBox, Fluxbox, similar you know workflow. Have our run command. Alright what do I think about Andix? Well the installer was dead simple just took a few minutes. I love the fact that I think this is the first Debian based distro that gave me the option of choosing between all three repos for uh, or uh, branches for Debian. It gave me the choice of stable testing and unstable. I love that because you know I could put this on any machine you know my my main machine my workstation that I'm recording this video on I would only put stable on it but you know I have 
other, you know, computers I play around in, my laptop, I have other desktops laying around that I do more testing on, you know, I would put something like Unstable on them. So I love the fact that I can, you know, install the same distro, but choose different branches. So, I mean, big advantage. Install any Debian branch you want. Very lightweight. Very, very fast. To, I mean, we're using lightweight window managers, but even VirtualBox, these things just pop up immediately. No stuttering at all on anything. Love that. So, memory footprint is going to be very small. Very low CPU usage. I mean, just viewing the uh, Conky system monitor here, you know, you're hardly getting anything under CPU. I mean, no ticks at all. So, very lightweight. A plus install, A plus on the choice of the different Debian branches, and A plus on installing a half a dozen lightweight window managers for us to choose from. Antics, big props. Peace, guys.